social media has been around for a couple of years now, and it was somewhat of a presence in Vancouver and Beijing, but this is really the first year that we have a huge number of people using Twitter and other social media, um, both athletes, people who are attending the games, people who are watching the games. So it's actually been quite a major factor. Um, one thing the journal is doing is that uh, we thought it was pretty fascinating that so many athletes were using social media, and it does kind of give you a glimpse into the way they're experiencing the games and can be very emotional at times. And it's interesting to see how they're interacting with their fans on, on Twitter and other social media. Um, so every day we've been pulling together what we're calling the Social Olympics, which is basically just a glimpse into the games via the athletes' eyes. Um, and that's, you know, that's yielded some interesting results uh, along the lines of interactions. Uh, I was just saying how Jessica Ennis was told by someone on Twitter that the day that she won her gold medal, uh, a woman tweeted at her and said, I just named my newborn daughter after you uh, to celebrate your gold. And that was a very interesting Twitter interaction between the two of them. Um, and then you've got some that are a little bit more uncomfortable, like the young diver who was getting somewhat harassed by somebody on Twitter. And actually, the guy who was harassing him what, um, you know, got into some trouble with the law. And I think that just goes to show that some people who use Twitter and social media um, don't really understand the impact it has on the fact that they're actually talking directly to an athlete or a public figure. Um, I think this guy really didn't, he sort of felt like he was just yelling at the TV um, when in fact he was talking direct, directly to this athlete and saying some pretty hurtful things. So um, it's sort of a new, a new world we're in for, for watching competitive sports. If you're not on Twitter, you don't really have your finger on the pulse of what's going on really early. Um, and so we're encouraging all of our reporters and editors to at least set up a Twitter account and start consuming what's happening there, um, use it as a personalized newswire. And that's a lot of what our team, our social media team does as well. So we'll be just really plugged in, looking for trends, spotting story ideas, um, you know, memes, things we think would make a good article, a good storify. Um, some kind of content that we think would be great for the Wall Street Journal website. Um, and then we'll either do it ourselves or we'll work with some of the reporters and editors to pull something together. Um, so as a news gathering tool, it's really key. Um, it's also a good interaction and engagement tool for our users. And then, of course, we're looking to uh, convert new Wall Street Journal users. Uh, you know, one big reason to be using social media is because you want to be interacting with the communities there. Um, some of them may not already subscribe or really think about the Wall Street Journal, but if we can make them see that we are interesting, that we have news that they would want to read, that we have a sense of humor, that you know we take a tone on social media that's a little bit more accessible maybe for a younger person, um, these are all things that help, us, that help us in the long run gain more subscribers and more loyal subscribers as well. What I like to say about you know, the uh, percentage of personal tweets versus work tweets is that it's okay to have a little bit of human voice once in a while. Um, in fact, I think it adds a lot to your persona as a journalist to, um, to open yourself up a little bit, but we all have to remember why people are probably following us, and it's most likely for what we're covering um, and what kind of information, what kind of added value we can give them. So um, I think our journalists do a great job of doing that on Twitter, um, really adding a lot of context to the, to the stories that they're writing and tweeting. Um, you know, if a big event is going on, especially a big financial event, we've got tons of editors and reporters who are just great voices to have in that conversation. They have a lot of experience. Um, they know how to be succinct and just tell you what this means in a tweet. So it's great to have them on board. We really try to build a team where people have a lot of different skills so we can support each other. So for everyone, news gathering and correspondence is a big deal. Um, and we also have someone who can code. Uh, we have somebody who used to be a graphics editor, so she's very visually focused. Um, we have someone who's been a long-time comments editor, so really understands how to interact with people and, and sort of what's going to set the community on fire, what kind of questions are going to work for them. So um, the whole team we're just trying to pull together as a whole and, and really capitalize on those different strengths. I think you know, we'll continue to see trends of politicians and others using social media to directly reach out to their supporters. Um, you know, and this is a really interesting thing as journalists because we now have a new avenue. Oftentimes now a politician will put something out on their Facebook page, for instance, uh, before or instead of putting out a statement um, or an email blast to, to journalists. So it's definitely something that journalists have to keep an eye on. Um, and I think, uh, you know, you'll also see people really sharing photos and, and it'll be very visually driven um, how they feel about certain candidates. 
Um, I think Facebook will play a large role in election day itself. Um, you know, a lot of people, there's going to be a new badge, like I voted, um, that'll be all over your Facebook news feed. And I think that might drive awareness of the election itself. And, you know, it's way too early to tell whether or not that'll actually have an impact on people's voting behavior. But it'll be an interesting um, spotlight on that behavior, at least, if, if not changing the behavior.